and to, uh, welcome to today's presentation where we have the pleasure to present expression bi biotechnologies with us from the company we both have ceo ben fransen and cfo keith alexander today's event will will we will look uh, take a deeper dive into the messages that was in the q3 uh, report coming out this week of course there will probably be a lot of focus on on, on the on the current headlines on the COVID-19, which is uh, due uh, before this year, uh, the phase two. So, so I guess there will be a lot of focus on that because it's it's in everybody's investor's mind. Um, as always, you're very welcome to ask uh, questions on the right hand side and in the box. Do uh, feel free to do it through the presentation. I will make sure to, to collect all the questions, see if it fits in the presentation. And if it doesn't, then uh, I'll make sure that, that we get through all the questions uh, at the end after the presentation. But I think uh, for now, Ben, uh, if you will take over from here. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, AT Anderson Capital, for uh, hosting this, this webinar. And my name is Ben Fransen. I'm the CEO of Expression Biotechnologies. And with me, I have Keith Alexander, our CFO. Uh, we will be going through the Q3 report that we released on Monday this week. Uh, and before I hand over the word to Keith Alexander for that purpose, I'll just go through our pipeline and some of the major uh, achievements during the, the previous quarter. Before doing that, uh, we have the standard forward-looking statements and disclaimer. We'll let you read that and we'll carry on with the presentation. Our pipeline is still high value and uh, address some of the highest unmet needs, uh, including the current pa pandemic with a COVID-19 vaccine project uh, that is already fully out licensed to Bavaria Nordic, uh, who is right now conducting a phase two trial. I'll get back to this shortly. Furthermore, we have our breast cancer vaccine project, uh, which we fully out licensed in February this year and are on full speed ahead with our preclinical development and hopefully uh, within a few months can release a proof of concept in animal data on this. On the influenza and our malaria initiatives, we are progressing uh, significantly as well. All of these projects are fully financed and, and partnered. Um, when it comes to the breast cancer vaccine, uh, this is 100% controlled by expression through the exclusive license from Adapback, which is our 34% owned joint venture. Uh, and let me go through uh, some more details with respect to these projects. Highly interesting, uh, we are in the COVID-19 vaccine field and are developing uh, a vaccine, which we say is probably the best vaccine uh, around, especially when we look at the preclinical uh, testing that we did last year. And we are now seeing clinical outcome, which uh, emphasizes that we, we are on the right path. So we have very recently uh, updated the outcome of the first clinical phase one, two trial. This is a uh, an open label safety trials that has been running in the Netherlands uh, and has been uh, investigating the safety and tolerability and some secondary efficacy parameters in 45 uh, test subjects. In August, we released the first data uh, from the first doses from 6 to 25 microgram, also on the neutralizing antibodies and saw a very encouraging uh, level of neutralizing antibodies, which was significantly higher than what you see in human convalescent sera, i.e. Uh, from uh, patients haven't been uh, uh, COVID-19 hit. Now we have just released here uh, within the last week, the additional data from the highest doses in the 50 and 70 microgram and interestingly, we see uh, a plateau of the immune response. So if you look at the right chart, you have a very nice dose response uh, curve. And you see that on the 50 and 70 microgram doses, we have reached a plateau 
that the level of neutralizing antibodies uh, seem to be on par also with the 25 microgram uh, levels that we saw before. And that's good from the perspective of uh, understanding the, the dose level requirements that we are at a, at a, a right uh, level of, of dosing. And we can also argue that it's also good for manufacturing purposes that we don't have to go higher in the doses than what we see here. And, and then uh, I don't know whether I should break into here because I, I saw some confusion around when Bavarian uh, just talked about this on, on their conference call that, that people were reading something negative into that 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 that, that you see a, a, a plateau on on, on those uh, doses, doses, but but. Uh, and of course, the, the, the study being designed or uh, the next one for 100. So I don't know whether you, you can clarify uh, maybe why you don't see it as, as negative in normal medicine. You don't want to see plateauing on, the, on, 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 on higher doses and, and maybe uh, also on, 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 the, on the phase, uh, the, the current phase program, which is running on 100, as, as I saw, and somebody talked about that might delay something. So I don't know whether you can clarify a little bit about your thoughts. I know it's not in your hand, but... Uh... Uh, well, it, it, this is very positive to me that we are reaching this uh, plateau and see this this level. Uh, it's good that we don't need a, a higher dose than what we see here. And I'm actually, in the next slide, I'll go into the details behind this because there I will tell some more about the phase two trial, which is ongoing now, uh, sponsored by Bavarian Nordic. This all relates to, to this fact, actually. Uh, interestingly, also, I just want to mention also the, the right part of this uh, chart, where you see a strong cross neutralization across variants and also including the, the Delta variant. So all of this is super good. So let me move uh, ahead. As you know, uh, it's fully out licensed to uh, Bavaria Nordic and Bavaria Nordic in August actually announced the initiation of phase two trial. And at the same time, actually also that they've been granted 800 million Danish krona from the Danish state to uh, fund the phase three trial. So this slide is actually taken from Bavaria Nordic's uh, Q3 report presentation on Friday last week. And you'll see there's been uh, a slight update on the phase two design. Uh, it was uh, actually set up to, to be tested in 150 test subjects uh, who were zero positive with the 100 microgram dose. And now uh, they have amended the, the trial, so they will look at 90 test subjects receiving the 100 microgram dose in this setup. And here there's actually been a full enrollment of all of, all of the test uh, subjects, meaning that, and Bavaria Nordic communicates that, that it's possible to, uh, to see the data from this within a few weeks. Secondly, the amendment of this phase two trial is then that they're actually looking at the half the dose, the 50 microgram dose in another arm of 90 test subjects. And here they are initiating this uh, and that's, that will be conducted over the coming months. In addition to this, they will also look at an arm, a third arm where uh, 30 test subjects, which who have not had uh, COVID-19 before with zero negative, will be uh, uh, primed and, and have two doses of on the 100 microgram level. So all this is going on as we speak. So I find this actually super exciting uh, that what we have seen from the first clinical phase one, two trial in terms of that plateau is good, that you don't necessarily need a 100 microgram dose. Uh, We'll see what that what that means here in the existing on the current ongoing phase two trial. It's good, and as I mentioned, uh, from a, a manufacturing perspective, uh, Bavaria Nordic may actually not need to to produce that much uh, to get the right efficacy level and long term effect from this vaccine. And then, uh, uh, if I may ask uh, just the one question, you know, uh, you uh, on it. it the data, and I'm not sure. Did you did you see any uh, class uh, three, uh, like grade three, systemic adverse effect as you're seeing in the RNA vaccines? There was none no. of them uh, even going up in the doses. So, 
So that's uh, even uh, if you had the high doses, if I understand you right, there was no of these uh, system, uh, uh, grade three systemic adverse effect you are seeing with your your big competitors, the RNA vaccine. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. We have seen across all the doses in the phase one uh, slash two trial across uh, six to, to 70 microgram, no uh, serious adverse events, no adverse I events of, of note uh, worthiness. Um, and actually this is very encouraging and also as stated from our principal investigator uh, at this, at the clinical site in, in the Netherlands, who has also been working with uh, vaccines based on uh, mRNA and, and other vaccine technologies. He has not seen the safety uh, so so uh, so so safe. Um, so that's that's actually quite cool. Going onwards uh, on the breast cancer vaccine, uh, we are progressing as we set out since we in licensed this in, in February this year. We're continuing the preclinical development, and in this quarter, we have uh, initiated the animal proof of concept study uh, in collaboration with University of Bologna in Italy, who have has these uh, state of the art animal models in the cancer field. Furthermore, on the on the manufacturing uh, side, we have established uh, the process so we can actually transfer this to a contract manufacturing organization. So that's also another important important step. Um, in this quarter, Q4, we are of course continuing with the proof of concept study, and as soon as possible, uh, early uh, 2022, we expect to be able to announce the headline results from from these proof of concept in animal studies. At that point in time, we will also be able to transfer our manufacturing process to a, a selected uh, clinical manufacturing organization. And we will also be uh, selecting a clinical research organization. So during 2022, it's of course important for us to progress towards uh, the first clinical trial, which will uh, take place in 2023. And before the end of 2022 uh, or early 2023, we uh, expect to find the, the trial application. So we're progressing as planned. Furthermore, in the influenza and malaria uh, projects, uh, as mentioned before, we are working on, uh, on a flu vaccine, which is um, under the Indigo uh, grant consortium. This is a, a huge consortium uh, where we have obtained funding from the EU. Uh, and from expression side, we have shipped the first proteins uh, for testing, and we have seen the right proteins with the right activity. So we have a good indication that our proteins are, are binding as intended. Uh, furthermore, in within this development consortium, uh, there's also uh, already a delivery technology, which is being uh, explored, uh, a patch-based technology. Um, so we will have uh, a patient-friendly uh, or even children-friendly um, administration at the end of the day. So this is progressing as, as planned. In malaria, we have our lead project. There are five uh, blood stage malaria project being uh, conducted in collaboration with the University of Oxford. And we have seen uh, in the beginning of the year uh, publication of the results from the first phase one study that took place in 67 healthy uh, volunteers in the UK, which was very good on the safety and tele tolerability side. And now here in 2021, uh, there's even an initiation of a phase 1B clinical trial that will take place in Tanzania and Africa, where 60 adults and children will be uh, investigated during the next year uh, and a half, uh, and we expect um, outcome from this study in 2023. So all in all, uh, we're progressing across our pipeline activities. Needless to say, on the coronavirus vaccine project, we are relying on the exclusive licensee, Bavarian Nordic, to continue as uh, planned. And so what we are communicating on this here going forward is really uh, based on what Bavarian Nordic uh, they achieve. And so far it's it's very good. And we're continuing with the other projects in breast cancer, influenza and, and malaria, as mentioned. 
we have been active in various events uh, over this year and the recent quarter and also in the near future so this is just to highlight uh, events if you look from the top left through the right and line by line you can see what we have uh, participated in and here in in uh, december i just want to highlight that i will be attending for the first time finally physically at actually bar in a store actually dark in, in stockholm on the 2nd of december i'm looking very much forward to meeting our investors face to face uh, at that event and we have another AT Anderson Capital uh, event coming up, the Growth Day on uh, the 9th of December, where I'll be presenting highlights as well. That said, I'll pass over the microphone and, and uh, word to, to Keith. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bent. And uh, thank you, Michael, as well. And, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. During the second quarter of 2021, we focused our efforts both in terms of manpower and money on supporting the testing of the ABN CoV-2 COVID-19 vaccine candidate and the preclinical development of ES2B C001, our wholly owned breast cancer vaccine candidate. I'll walk through the impact of those efforts on our financials uh, in the coming pages. Starting with operating income, we experienced an 18% decline year over year in the third quarter to 2.6 million Swedish krona and a decline of 7% on a year-to-year, year-to-date basis to 9.3 million krona. Looking at the trend shown in the chart to the left, you can see that operating income in the quarter was slightly below the long-term average. In the middle chart, we focus on net sales, which reflect revenue from projects, licenses, and our web shop. You can see the net sales in the quarter were in line with the long-term average. Year-to-date, they increased 98% compared to 2020, marking a continuation of the significant recovery from last year. They benefited from follow-on projects related to the development of the COVID-19 vaccine, strong royalties from licensed products, and direct sales of expression-produced proteins. In the chart to the right, we show the other component of operating income, which is essentially grant-related income. As a reminder, in 2020, we received a significant amount of grant income from the COVID-19 project. On the topic of income looking forward, I'd like to comment on what is on everyone's minds, potential proceeds from the COVID-19 vaccine. While we can't comment further on the actual size of the proceeds, we would like to provide some additional color about the timing. Before I start, I wanna emphasize that the product is still undergoing trials, so there's no certainty that we'll receive these proceeds and that the timing is based on what Bavarian Nordic has communicated. Starting in late 2022 or early 2023, we would expect to see, receive a very small approval submission related milestone payment. In 2023, assuming the vaccine is on the market, we would start to receive sales milestone payments, which in total can be up to approximately 2 million euros, and sales royalties, which are a lower double digit percentage of ADAPFAX royalties. Beyond that point, we can continue to receive any, any remaining sales milestone payments and ongoing sales royalties. Larger milestone payments and royalties will also accumulate during this period at our 34% owned joint venture, ADAPFAC, and could become quite valuable. We are aware of that value and will consider ways to monetize it. At this point, though, it is too early to discuss exactly how that will happen. Keith, if, if I may ask a question regarding this one, someone was uh, speculating, you know, that there might be a pre-sale, you know, before you have the final approval, before you start the sales process, that there might be a pre-ordering, you know, if data progressing and, 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 and Bavarian as your partner speaks to those, we have seen that with, with another company where there was actually a, a pre-ordering from, from, from the European uh, Union before it was approved and in and, and reality on market. Would that I, I don't know whether it's, you want to be that detailed, but would that uh, would that also give you some kind of uh, income when if it's a pre-ordering? I know it's a little bit detailed, and I don't know whether you want to answer it. So that potentially could be in twenty two, as it was discussed on 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 the, on the Bavarian uh, conference call. Hi, Michael. That's a that's a very interesting question, uh, and uh, I think we should cross that bridge when we get to it. At this point, it's it's too early to say. Uh, but certainly it's something that is, is on our minds and uh, you know, we'll be on top of it should that come to happen. Perfect, I know that's <laughs> speculation. I, I needed to ask the question. Another question is because we are lowering the dose, the production capacity is probably 
going to be higher by uh, by Bavarian Nordic uh, and on a lower dose, uh, just to understand whether you want to be this detailed that that the agreement on the sales milestones uh, is it, it's not on 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 the protein as such as how much is produced and sold. It, it is uh, is your milestones on the value that the Bavarian will get out of it if it's cheaper to produce less uh, micrograms needed. Uh, they still can keep the same sales price. Uh, so uh, to get a clarification there, whether you are, whether your sales milestones are dependent on on the micrograms used or or, or it's on the sales that Bavarian will go out, just to to get that clarified. I don't know whether you want to go into those details. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit hesitant. Uh, of course, what I'd like to emphasize is that our sales royalties are just that; they are based on sales. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that for now. Perfect. The sales milestones, of course, uh, yeah, I won't comment on that. They are up to 2 million euros, which if you put them in, in scope, uh, comparison to the sales royalties, it's a smaller portion of it. So uh, I'm not even sure it's material to comment on. Perfect. No problem. Okay. I'll move to the next slide. Um, operating costs in the third quarter amounted to 12.4 million Swedish krona. That's an increase of 72% compared with the third quarter of 2020. And on a year-to-date basis, they increased by 73% to 41.5 million Swedish krona. This reflect, reflects primarily costs related to the preclinical development of our breast cancer vaccine candidate. And that includes the initiation of the proof of concept study that, that Ben mentioned earlier. It also reflects some slightly higher personnel costs due to changes in how we accrued for incentive-based compensation. Those we made earlier this year, and they're, they're not, uh, they have no impact on cash. And it also reflects a slightly higher headcount. Looking forward, as Ben mentioned, we'll start incurring costs related to CMC manufacturing. That's much more expensive than any other development that we've had so, so far. Uh, so we expect our costs to increase from here. On the next slide, we show the profit and loss for the period. This is after financial expenses and taxes. We had a net loss of 9.3 million Swedish krona in the third quarter. That's an increase of 92%. Year to date, the net loss increased similarly with uh, to 29.6 million krona. Uh, commenting on the difference between the operating income and operating costs and this profit and loss, financial expenses have been much lower year to date than in 2020 due to the termination of a bridge loan. Uh, we do mark that uh, negative interest rates have an impact on our cash balance. Uh, and it's a factor that we evaluate and, and, or look at on an ongoing basis. For the last slide, I'll just take a, a quick comment on cash. This shows our ca the trend in our cash balance, which ended the quarter at 142 million sec, which is the highest level in expressions history. In the third quarter, we, com we completed the last step of our 2020 rights issue which was the subscription of the T05 or T05 warrants. Through that process, we raised 44.3 million Swedish krona before transaction costs, and we now have runway into 2023. I'd like to end by thanking our investors, uh, without whom we wouldn't be able to finance the innovations that are happening at Expression. And with that, I'll pass it back to Michael and stick around for any Q&A. Perfect, and uh, do feel free to to ask questions. Uh, I I have a a question I would like to start with. We saw some insider sale, actually a little bit close to to the date. Uh, can you can you give a little bit color on, on any of the reasons? Is it uh, the normal uh, Danish tax reason? Is it, is it other reason that he needs to to pay for some warrants? I, I don't know whether you can give some uh, clarification on that. Uh, either Ben or or Keith Alexander. I, I I guess it's. It's always uh, uh, on on people's uh, focus or mind. Yeah, I can comment on on, on that, and, and please feel free to, to chip in, Keith. Um, I think uh, Michael, you're you're referring to a, a, a disposal of, of shares by our chairman of the board here yesterday. Uh, of course, he is a founder of the company, and his setup of of owning shares in in the company has been through a, a company. Uh, set up and that's actually uh, not that beneficial in, in in Denmark because in Denmark you are taxed by capital gains uh, even irrespective if you have any liquid cash uh, in your holdings so um, so of course there will be a, a, a need 
in light of the huge and significant share price increase that experience that that expression has had to actually realize some some uh, liquid uh, cash to to pay off this this tax and that's unfortunately uh, the, the case of course uh, i'm quite sure i can speak on, on martin's behalf when it comes to backing up the company uh, consistently and he's been doing that for 12 years uh, so it's only good with the uh, with a value increase that we've seen the capital that the tax situation is is an unfortunate matter in denmark Yes, so uh, the unfortunate situation we are seeing in Denmark when people are holding it in companies that uh, they need sometimes to liquefy to to pay current tax bills. So so that's that's nice to have that uh, been there. Also to elude a little bit on uh, what maybe what some of the Bavarian, you know, we are progressing, maybe preparing investors to understand a little bit uh, about the data that is coming in, in, in phase two. There was some discussion. Uh, you have now in, 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 in the current phase one, one two uh, study seen uh, that um, that there was the 12 times uh, effect, but there was a little bit of discussion on on what to, to expect uh, from the common data. I know you're not coming, but maybe express a little bit about this one that this trial you are you are, you're doing on will be very uh, different on uh, or there will be a lot of uh, uh, different uh, study persons that some has been vaccinated uh, lately will have a higher uh, immune uh, response already in the body and such stuff i don't know whether you can elaborate uh, elaborate a little bit on this uh, what, what what the expectations are what people should expect uh, regarding the next one uh it's difficult to 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 speculate uh on on bavarian's behalf um so but but obviously uh, it will be interesting to see the outcome of of also the 100 microgram level in uh, in people who have already had the the uh, the covid 19 uh, disease so it's in zero positive uh test persons so they've had it before and and of course, it's all uh, based on a booster strategy, uh, and that's a good thing. So we'll see how it, it works to maintain or increase the neutralizing antibody levels so we can get the long-term effect, which is really the unique feature of this vaccine, where we are standing out uh, very well, indeed, compared with other vaccine technologies. Yeah, I think it, it's worth to remind, if I understand correctly, you know, that uh, that that twelve times is so much higher than everything else you see, you know, and 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 that actually just one times give you a very strong protection, so you don't need to reach the, those numbers. Uh, I, I I guess, and 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 also just to to make sure that the, the next phase two programs will. Is, is there something about you know the the the, the differences of the the strings also? Will there be some data also covering that? Is there something underlying there? I, I'm I'm not uh, quite sure. You know, on looking on the different strings of of the COVID nineteen uh, vaccines, you know. Uh, it's uh, now now we've seen a plateau of the if you're referring to the level of neutralizing antibodies uh, across the highest doses in the first phase one slash two trial. Um, let's see when we when we see the data that Bavarian Nordic they release. I can only think that it's uh, it will be encouraging, of course. I, I know it's wrong of me to ask questions. I know the data will come so soon that we might have to wait for it. But of course, it's way. There's a question out here. Do we have any thoughts on on mer merging with Adapvac? You know this uh, your your partner there to to get some kind of uh, synergies between Expression and and, and Adapvac. Uh, I I don't know whether that's possible <laughs> uh, even. But but uh, can you give some uh, thoughts uh, about that one? Uh, it, it seems like uh, it's a strong technology partner and such one. Could you uh, get some synergies out of this uh, if you would merge or if it's even possible with the setup you you have right now? Well, from a technological perspective, it's made very good sense to combine the expressions uh, protein production technology with the virus-like particles particle technology that Adapac holds, and 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 that combination is the basis of our two uh, projects, uh, namely for uh, the COVID nineteen vaccine and for the for the cancer vaccine. Um, I would say I would rather respond on a 
high level strategic uh, perspective that we are always looking into ways of, of uh, increasing our value through collaborations in all kinds of manners. So it's, it's, it's on our plate, but I can't comment specifically on, on that. No problem. I, I know it was speculation. And, and there's a question here. Are you working on a new price target from Analyse Garden? I, I'm guessing that uh, are you in collaboration with with uh, with doing something with those uh, right now? Ben, shall I take this one? Sure. Yeah, uh, I just want to be very clear that when it comes to price targets, those come from the uh, the research analysts. Uh, we're not involved in the valuation or price targets that, that they issue. Uh, we do, of course, fact check. Uh, what, what they would like us to fact check, uh, but it doesn't have to do with valuation. I, I think uh, if you want to think about price targets, though, uh, it, they make it pretty clear in in the reports, both the uh, Analyse Guide and, and Pareto, uh, what the key drivers are. Uh, so if you read them closely and, and see uh, what they are, then you'll have a pretty good idea of, of what could cause them to change. Uh, but I won't comment further than that. Uh, no, I, I understand that, that it was maybe more a question whether you were working together with them. No, I, I think it was a, a question trying to see if uh, there was something. Perfect answer. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, there's a question here, and again, goes a little bit back to the technicalities on, on, on your royalties and such stuff. The Bavarian has struck a deal with the Danish government, meaning that uh, they fund them, but at, at, on certain levels, they, they will pay back that money uh, depending on the sales development. So there's a question here, just uh, whether you want to go into those details, whether it's you get it on the sales or you get it on the sales deducted uh, from from the payment back from the from from the Danish state. So 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 that is the question. You know, will you get from the total sales, or is there also something in your agreement that uh, that that will deduct what they need to pay back to the Danish states if certain criteria is made? Emit, sorry. Well, <clears throat> I, I can respond to that. Uh, the, the, the agreement is between Adaptvac and Bavaria Nordic, uh, and to my understanding, uh, it's based on sales royalties, and there's no amendment to that due to that uh, state funding. No. Perfect. That was as clear as we could get. Um, there's a question here if, if, if you are. Uh, COVID vaccine uh, stays best in class in phase three. Could an emergency use be applied? This is what you know, what, what, what we were talking a little bit about also uh, 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 under Bavarian, this possibility, pre-orders and, and emergency use. Any of your thoughts on, on that, uh, Bent? <laughs> I'll refer to uh, the statements from Bavarian Nordic. Um, it may be... Uh, possible uh, in a late stage of the phase three trial. Um, so that's that may be an opportunity. Yeah, perfect. I don't think we have uh, more questions. I also know you guys are, are very busy. So thank you for taking us through these uh, steps. I can maybe recommend that, that, that people uh, uh, listen to the Bavarian <laughs> conference calls. Uh, they were very upbeat and positive and a lot of questions, which I know you been for reasons cannot answer was actually maybe answered not directly by them, but indicating there. So, so it could be a, a good idea to, to read through or, or listen to that uh, to that uh, conference call from from Bavarian from last Friday, so just from me a, a small tip. Uh, but thank you, Keith. Thank you, Ben, and thank you for the audience for listening in uh, here today. And have thank a nice day. Thank, yeah, you. thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.